Hi, Sarah Finn here again, ready for another Ocarina video. I am super, super excited for this video. I've been waiting for it for a long time, trying to pick the perfect song to demo this Ocarina because this is one of my favorite Ocarinas I will be demoing today. This is the Water Ocarina um, from my Elements series. So, yay! Um, this is a tenor or alto C, um, depending on your uh, definition, I guess. Um, this is my absolute favorite ocarina, I think, of all time. Not just elements, not just what I designed. Um, you can call me biased, but I'm going to explain why, too. So, as I said, water is kind of the, the middle of the element series, the um, middle tone, same kind of tone that Link plays in the game. Um, and this was actually the first one of my elements to be put in production. Not the first one designed, um, but the first uh, ocarina to reach like actuality, to be an actual physical thing. Um, and as I said, it is my favorite. Um, while some of the other ocarinas like Fire and Earth, I've said before, came into being like super easy. I knew what I was going to do with them immediately. Water was the first one where I had to like stop and think like, how do I make water into this physical thing? Especially knowing that I'm going to be doing an ice one too, and I can't really go that route with it. So with water, uh, something that I've been I've been developing and have definitely developed now as sort of my aesthetic with uh, designing ocarinas is that I want to design an ocarina. I don't want to design just a sculpture that happens to play music. I want it to be an ocarina, I want to look like an ocarina, I want to celebrate the shape and style of ocarinas. So um, my thought process with this one was, um, it actually started out with just kind of doodles that happened on top of my skeleton framework of the design. And I was thinking, um, how would it look if water was running over it, like if it was in a stream and the little rivulets and eddying around making little swirlies. So that was the idea with all these little like uh, sculptural designs um, and using them to define the actual natural curves of an ocarina. See how it just kind of follows along. Um, I also really like with my ocarinas to show off the holes. Uh, I think that's one of the most important parts of the ocarina, so I don't want to hide them. I want them to be there, I want them to be beautiful, I want them to be noticeable. Um, yeah. And something I also just really wanted to point out with the water one, um, because I put a little like nerdy, I guess, Easter egg in it. If you look at each one of the little sets here, there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They all have three, I guess, stripes would be the closest um, idea of what to call those things. And they are there to represent uh, solid liquid and gas of water, because if I wasn't enough of a nerd already, now you really know. Um, like I said, water is my favorite of them. Um, water, like I am a water sign stuff. Yeah, but so I knew like water had to be, had to be right. I checked with other signs too. So it wasn't like I wasn't, you know, calling out to the fires and the earths and all that. Um, but this one was me. So like I knew I had to feel it. Um, the color as well, I wanted to make sure it was blue because water, blue. Yeah, but I didn't want it to be a dark blue because I didn't want it to be another Zelda. I didn't want it to have that comparison. I do want it to be its own thing. Um, when this one, when I presented this one finally to my coworkers and everything, I think this is what made everyone see like this is like the elements are a thing. Um, the water made perfect sense. Like once I shut it off, no one was like, oh, I don't know about this part. They were like, no. I get it, the elements are gonna be a thing, let's go full force. And that was super, super encouraging to me as an artist, like to have such a positive response. And um, this was, um, it wasn't the first ocarina I designed overall, but it was the first design that was fully me. So to have that um, transition from a 2D drawing that came out of my brain to having this physical object in my hand, like an having been the creator is such an amazing feeling. I don't know that I can accurately describe how amazing that is, and I'm super, super thankful to be uh, given this opportunity to create art for a living and then share it with everyone. Like, I've sold so many waters at conventions, and it's, like, it, like, it warms my heart to, like, see people want something that I did. 
Um, I've even had people uh, have me sign them. Um, I usually say like, do you want me to sign the box um, to make sure? But no, some people really want me to sign the ocarina and that's like an honor. Like you, you don't even know, like I, I love it so, so, so much. Um, so yeah, the tone on this is absolutely beautiful, super, super clear. Um, I will tell you anytime if I am doing a performance and I don't need a double, this is the ocarina I pick bar none. I collect all sorts of ocarinas and I usually collect um, Alta C's um, to have a pretty good comparison. This one totally is what I will practice with, what I will perform with. Um, I, you can call me biased and that's totally fair, but this is the bar that I hold all my designs to now as far as tone. Um, like I want it to sound as good as the water at least. Like I, I want to go above and beyond at all times. Um, yeah, so this is my like number one recommendation for everyone. Maybe not absolute beginners because it is a little bit more expensive and I totally get not wanting to break the bank immediately. But if you know, like if you're a musician, if you're gonna record even, like this is amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, one thing that you should know about it though, like it does sound amazing. It's super, super clear. Um, it's hard to make a bad note on it. It's also hard to make a quiet note. So I would not be playing this in your apartment at midnight. Um, you might have some unhappy neighbors, but if you do that, you'll have um, a beautiful tone at midnight anyway. <laughs> Maybe do some lullabies or something. So the song I am going to be playing today is called Rim Elm. It is a song from an older video game that was really big for my childhood called Legend of Lagaya. I actually have the actual game because I need to have it. Oh, it was a PlayStation game. I believe it came out in 1998. So a little bit after Final Fantasy VII, um, I tend to compare the two graphically. Um, it's a different game entirely, but it is another JRPG and I really love it. I might be looking at it through nostalgia lenses a little bit, so maybe people won't get it as much as I do, but um, I play it pretty often. Um, I keep my PlayStation around just so I can play it because I love it so much. And as I said, I'm going to be playing the song Rim Elm, which is the village um, and the village song for the main protagonist, Vaughn. Um, it's a kind of a fast, fun little song, so it is a bit more difficult, but I really wanted to show off the capabilities of the water. So here we go. was Rim Elm. I did mess up a little bit on the end and I'm sorry. Uh, my fingers got ahead of my breath. Um, but yeah, I do really, really love this song. Um, you may have noticed I've been playing some kind of weirder, unusual songs that aren't as well known and I've gotten a really good response from them. So if you're into it, let me know. Um, if you want me to keep doing it, if you want me to go back to more popular songs, let me know that. Send me suggestions, talk to me in the comments, and I will be seeing you soon. Bye!